You're listening to Secrets of the Art Business podcast. Practical tools and insightful conversations for the curious art professional. The aim is to make the art world a bit more fun, accessible, less obscure, and share with you some interesting behind the scenes. This is Secrets of the Art Business. My name is Daniela. I'm an art advisor and founder of the Blonde Art Dealer blog. I'm your host for season one. I've been in the art business for the past 15 years. And during this time, I met some incredible professionals that gave me a glimpse into the complexity of the art business. So for this episode one, we have here as a guest, um, Daniel Atherton. Hello. Hello. Welcome, Daniel. Thank you so much for having me. Thank, Thank you, you so much Hiya. for coming. So I'm really excited to have you here, of course. I'm excited and to be here. For episode one. <laughs> and we um, met on Instagram over three indeed. years ago. We did indeed. Yeah, you approached me there to come and help you for one of your pop-up shows. Yeah, I did indeed. And um, it was really, really interesting because I didn't know you before, but then I really um, came you know, across you and really um, start you know, understand who you are. And you are a, a fully creative person. Thank you. Um, an art professional, um, been involved in a major auction house for many years, mm -hmm. despite your un young age, <laughs> and also really I'm involved. Deceptively old, I'm actually 16. <laughs> <laughs> and really involved with um, young emerging artists. Yeah. So the first topic we're going to address here in the podcast is about your previous experience in pop-up shop, mm -hmm. and really you organised several ones in London. Mm -hmm. So I wanted yeah. to really, and they were very successful, and I wanted to ask you what went well and how did you organize it, you know, the struggles, but also the success. And sure. really you had a really interesting concept of bringing artists from Eastern Europe. So mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about that as well. Yeah, definitely. Um, well, thank you for starters for letting me be on the podcast as your first guest. I'm very, I'm very privileged and appreciative. Um, yes, so um, I co-founded a reject gallery now called Kravitz Contemporary uh, with the amazing uh, Sarah Sosniej. Um, who was kind of the, the heart and soul of the project, um, and I was the business head, uh, the, the level-headed, hopefully, at times, business head. But um, it was an amazing venture, and is an amazing venture. Um, hopefully, we'll have a lot more shows in the future. Um, we've had three successful shows. Mm -hmm. um, we had one in uh, Bermondsey, which was our first show in, I think, 2018, 2019. I get lost track of the days, because <laughs> we, we, we lost a year, essentially. And um, we did two in Shoreditch, two separate exhibitions in Shoreditch. Which um, I came to and I really absolutely loved. You, did. Love, uh, you yeah. did. And uh, as you said, I spoke to you on Instagram um, more from a client outreach perspective mm -hmm. um, and wanted to understand, OK, how can we work together to monopolize um, more of a buying, more of a buying traction for these amazing artists from Eastern Europe? Um, so we represent um, Eastern European artists. Um, Poland specific, we had Jakub Glinski, um, an amazing abstract artist. And we had um, Clemens who kind of did hyper-realistic religious subjects, mm -hmm. um, and Dunya, who used public art. This was our third, third exhibition in a candle shop in Shoreditch. Um, who and it was the first time in London, right? Exactly. Um, he used public art um, and abstract art as well um, to represent just beautiful pieces. Um, Sarah herself was the main spearhead in finding these talented artists. Mm -hmm. She traveled, and I think that one of the most important things is with art, and if you're starting any sort of gallery, is to do your groundwork, you know, mm -hmm. go and explore, go to that city, go to that country, and understand why they're doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, Warsaw has an amazing breadth of life, of music, of culture, of art, and uh, we wanted to bring that over to London. Mm -hmm. And it was an amazing opportunity for us to both use our experience in the art world academically and uh, business acumen wise and go look how are we going to represent these artists and give them a, a, a platform in London obviously London is London like it's a capital city it's so well known and for art it's a massive you know tick tick box for you to exhibit there, yeah so. like art cities like Paris and exactly. New York you know it's a big um, big market yeah. and of course that's where you know many art collectors live as well and that's the exposure you know the validation of being shown in London and have that on your CV as an totally. artist is huge yeah um, so what are what were the struggles but also what did it went really well you know what did you notice that it was like you know once you start doing the pop-up shows what was a good like practice or pattern that you had through the shows so I think once you get your first one out of the way it gets a bit easier because you know uh, the hardships of it on first go um, it's it's tough you've got to be determined and you've got to 
at times when you're feeling like it's a massive struggle, just pick yourself up. Um, it's great to work in, in a team, 100%, because you can lean on each other. And I don't think either of us could have done it without each other. Um, and you I were like separating the roles, like the founding, the yeah, location. Exactly. We, we separated roles, we divvied things out, and we focused on the main goal and what was to represent the artist to the best of our abilities. Um, one of the struggles, I think, I think definitely that I found with it is that the art world is so numerous in what it represents, um, but blue chip and auction houses and successful galleries um, all kind of do popular artists and artists that are prominent within their field. We were representing artists that weren't prominent, you know, that were undiscovered, that were new, and it's scary to bring a completely different region really into London um, and represent them on a, on a, on a bigger platform. Mm -hmm. So I think that was one of the noticeable challenges, but we just continue to, to try and smash it. Yeah. From the artist's point of view, what do you yeah. think it's um, a really good you know, quality for the artist to get noticed you know, by people like you mm -hmm. and Sarah like, to come into you know, different shows? So what, what do you look for in an artist? You, know, you look at his, inst at his Instagram account? Do you just look at the website? Yeah, um, all of the above. Um, mm -hmm. I think from an artist, the content that you produce, whatever type of artist or person you are, yeah. if you're producing good content, people are going to be interested in it. So good artwork, mm -hmm. good sculptures, good media. Um, I think the way you represent yourself as a brand identity is yeah. important. Um, yes, commerciality is a massive thing and to be commercial and viable is important, but to be original and authentic is more important. Mm -hmm. um, artists face struggles, whatever art they represent, um, it's passionate and meaningful to them. And as long as you're creating subject matter that's true to you, um, I think that that is an amazing buy-in for any dealer, for any gallery, mm -hmm. um, an auction house. You know, you want to have an authentic story. Um, and that's something that I really appreciate and I, and I love when I look at artists and artwork myself. Well, now you're an artist yourself. Yeah, there you go. Well, yeah. So then I think that really changed your perspective yeah. of like, you know, how an art, you know, from an artist's point of 100%. view. 100%. I think it, for me, um, music is my art form that I so liberally create. And I think that I can definitely understand from a perspective and the struggle and how difficult it can be to get things noticed, um, how hard it can be. But I think you've also got to check yourself. I think you've got to check yourself and think, okay, where am I? Why am I doing this? Am I doing it for the right reasons? And I think that you'll go far if you are. Um, I think people can, smart people can mm -hmm. suss out what you are doing and if you're doing it in a way that's truly authentic or truly just there to make some money or to, or to be a success. And I think you've got to be careful with stuff and like that. And another important aspect I would like to touch on is how to deal with rejection because that's, oh that's going to come. Heavy like question. Big time. Um, yeah, you've got, to, you've got to face it. Rejection is a thing. Rejection in all forms, um, as hard as it can be to face, you've got to deal with it. And um, rejection is tough when it's your own work. Mm -hmm. And I think you have to take consideration that people, whoever are judging it, might not be in the right headspace at the time. They might just not like the artwork and you try not to take it personally. Um, that's a massive thing because people are going to love it and hate it. Um, I personally like certain types of artwork over other types of artwork. I find things more um, engaging than other things, and that's my personal preference. Mm -hmm. And you have to remember at the end of the day that these people that are valuing the art, that are selling it, it's their personal preference, and they are looking out for something, but they can also be inspired. So if the artwork's inspiring you to continue making it, it will hopefully be inspiring someone else, so continue doing that. That's a great uh, ending to this. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Of course. Um, we're gonna now um, move to the next topic, yes. and it's a really hot topic oh in the art market Talk nowadays. So it's the NFT. Ah, you know, yes. has been everywhere on social tokens. media. It's been mm. on Instagram. You know, um, I really love you know the way Jerry Gogosian is uh, taking you know yeah. the accounts and really making fun of like all the you know the way that really art professionals you know taken into account. But from my point of view. It's such an interesting topic because it's all about the future. Yeah. It's digital art. Yeah. Um, and digital art has been around for many, many years, but maybe from a collector's point of view, less really approached and yeah. many, not many people feel digital comfortable. Digital art's hard to sell, you know, it's a weird yes. medium in that sense. You know, you're buying the DVD of it or are you buying, do you know what I mean? Exactly. It's, a, it's I think initially people were kind of afraid of selling it. Um, you know, like installation art in, in that sense, a few years ago, it was more of a, ooh, a treacherous thing of how would I exhibit it? How would I put it in my home? 
I think you're right. This is an amazing topic to touch on. And so let's clarify yeah, what, what NFT is of first. Course, so if you can explain a bit. Of course I can. So I'm not an expert in um, <laughs> NFTs or Bitcoin or anything like that, but I have researched it and I am interested in it because it's the way forward, I think. And non-fungible tokens are essentially a currency or an artwork that artists can create in forms of their own artwork and distribute to buyers. Uh, they can create it in additions or as a singular value and sell it on the, on the blockchain. Yeah. Yes, so it's um, the blockchain, of course, is yeah. now you know also quite common. We like banks and now finance, auction houses, finance, and the currency they trade is Ethereum, which is also really exactly. you know well trade. Um, and from the artist's point of view, um, there's full traceability of the artwork, you know, full provenance, full information mm -hmm. out there, and it's very very interesting that also the artists retain the royalties. Yes. So um, not only transparency on the primary market, the selling of the artwork in the first place, mm -hmm. but then transparency on the reselling of the artwork. It's amazing. At yeah. the moment, artists don't really have control on Yeah, I think it's actually the massive benefit for artists. Um, I don't know too much about it in terms of royalties accrued and what the percentages is, etc. But um, artist resale right is a big thing for artists that are still living, that is, is current within auction houses and selling. But having the royalties like you would as a musician would who created an original piece of artwork mm -hmm. um, is fantastic. And I think that is a massive benefit for the artist. And the whole blockchain, Bitcoin, NFT realm is that the artist is taking ownership of their own work and selling it themselves. You know, hmm, will it be a problem in the future for galleries, for these third parties that are selling the artwork for auction houses for dealers i don't know but i think it does take the right into the artist's hand where they can sell multiply retain authenticity and produce their artwork in a in a new in a new world and also it doesn't have just have to be digitally they can provide their buyer um a physical malleable item too mm -hmm. um i know this is an often uh, thing that artists do do and it also gives more of a value for the buyer you know they've got one a digital thing but also a physical thing um, you know artwork's not just retained to the digital realm it's also physical and you can buy physical artwork with um, NFTs too so I was researching also in the NFT mm -hmm. market and I noticed that um, last year, uh, you know, December 2020, nine million dollars worth of artworks mm -hmm. were traded yeah. in the NFT, which is an incredible number. So the potential, it's there to yeah. really develop. And I saw also that there's an online gallery, you know, just specializing in that. We were talking about, you know, galleries and yeah. how, you know, dealers or now auction houses yeah. will adapt to that. It'll change the art world forever. And I think something that I've always learned and which I've always appreciated is that the art movements that are created go against the time that they were in. You know, we've got the surrealists, you've got the impressionists, expressionists, all these amazing periods of art went against and were abnormal within the time that they were in. I think that now we've always thought, oh, what's going to be the next big thing in art? And I think this could be it. You know, we've got contemporary art, but mm -hmm. moving over to digital art. And I think that's going to be the realm that people are really going to get their teeth stuck into and invest in, and they should. They should read more about it and get involved in it and celebrate it because it is the new form for our generation to be appreciative of. Absolutely, and also like, you know, digital art has been around for years, yeah. so it's not new. Yeah. And this is a new tool, a new way to a really appreciate yeah, exactly, exactly from a transaction point of view. And um, I think, yeah, the market will show some resistance, yeah. you know, As uh, the dealers will show some resistance. People are scared of it, you know, it's the exactly. unknown. Yeah, it's the unknown, but I think, you know, there's with everything, there's opportunity. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as the artists are protected mm -hmm. and as long as they get benefit from it, yeah. um, also from a commercial point of view, which you know makes them grow more and more yeah. and be more confident in what they do, then I think it's positive yeah, for sure. 100%. I think from the um, also from the artist point of view. Yeah. Now we're going to move into you as yes. an artist, okay. as a musical artist. Get personal. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So you are releasing tomorrow. I am a single. Yes. Yes. I am. It's funny enough. We your were debut single. Well, yes, my debut single. Actually, funny enough, talking about the royalties of the artist and then royalties of the musician, it all kind of interlinks. Um, yeah, I am. Um, tomorrow I'm releasing. So we're all excited to listen Thank to you. Foundations. Yes, Foundations. <laughs> Tell us about like how you. I mean, have you always been in music? Like, yeah, how do you I mean, get into it? Do you know what? I've always, I hate, I hate it when everyone goes, I've always sung. Yes, uh, singing, I've always been a very happy person singing all the time. <laughs> and I love singing and I love songwriting and I love writing in general, poetry. And I think in the past three years, I took the opportunity to say, look, Daniel, um, start pushing some stuff out there. Start doing a bit of gigging. Um, I've been surrounded by some really amazing musicians that inspired me. And I want to then inspire other people. And I'm hoping that with my music, it can. And... Um, Foundations is meant to be an uplifting track. It's meant to be digestible, but especially in this past year, 
It's all about leaning on the people you love, leaning, about, leaning on your friends. And for me, we couldn't have got through this last year without doing that. And it's, it's you know, paying homage to them, you know, respecting that and saying, mm-hmm. look, I'm here happy to celebrate what's, what's happened, the, the ups and the downs with my mates. And, um, and that's it, essentially. Yeah, so we're going to listen uh, to your single cool. as soon as we finish the podcast. Thank you, we'll roll it out. So, yeah, we're very looking forward to listen to your track. Thank you. And be Thank uplifted. you for giving it some airtime. You know, <laughs> get to be uplifted and nice outro. Exactly. So thank you so much for that. Always. And um, I also want to thank you, you now for coming here and being on the first episode of the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and to our listeners, I want to say thank you for tuning in. And um, you're going to find all the episodes on Spotify, YouTube, and also on the Artfix YMX radio app. So make sure you download it and rate it if you enjoy the episode. And um, make sure that you tune in for the next one. Thank you so much. Mm. Never let me drown Wiping away the everlasting frown The ones you can rely on You don't need your I.O. I promise you, my promises Really do mean well But it's all of you who save me from the wishing well We're dancing on the tables, using them as stepping stones, steady foundations. Wait a minute while I'm free falling. Look who's calling, catch me on solid ground. Even stop a bullet for you So take my hand, let's stick to the golden plan Cherish those teenage years Cry out the adult tears We're dancing on the tables Using them as stepping stones Steady foundations Wait a minute while I'm free falling Look who's calling Catch me on solid ground We're dancing on the tables Using them as stepping stones Steady foundations We're dancing on the tables Whoa Wait a minute while I'm free falling I say, wait a minute while I'm free falling